In this chapter, you'll learn what a program is and how to write a few simple programs. Writing programs is a specialized aspect of using a computer. Remember, you don't have to know how to program to use your computer. If you do, however, you can increase your productivity and enjoyment of your personal computer. Essentially, a program is a logical and sequential list of orders you give to a computer to tell it how you want it to do what you want done. The important thing to remember about writing new programs is to understand and plan each and every step that must be done. Your computer will do exactly what you program it to do, nothing more. You must tell it all it needs to know to accomplish your task. If you leave out even the smallest instruction, your computer will not run a program correctly. Remember, your computer is really very dumb until you tell it what it needs to know to operate. You're going to write a few programs now. Go ahead now and start your DOS disk. It will be less confusing for you if you work in all uppercase letters in this chapter, so when the DOS prompt appears, press the caps lock key once then type the word BASIC and press ENTER. Your disk drive started and loaded the disk version of the language BASIC into RAM so you can work with it. Remember, earlier in this program you had loaded Cassette BASIC. Well, Disk BASIC does everything Cassette BASIC does and allows you to use the DOS system for files. Advanced BASIC is also available on your DOS master. It allows you to do everything that Cassette and Disk Basic do, but also has some commands like Circle, Paint, and Draw for use if you have the Color Graphics Monitor Adapter. For now, we'll work with Disk Basic. It would be helpful to have a clear screen to work on, so at the prompt, type the letters C, L, S, and press Enter. The letters C, L, S stand for Clear Screen and do just that. The word CLS is a reserved word. It is one of the many specific letter combinations that form words that your computer has been programmed to understand. These reserved words are frequently used commands that would take many more keystrokes to execute. Rather than requiring you to type in several lines of instructions to clear the screen, typing CLS enter simply does it all for you. As you proceed through this chapter, the message syntax error may come up on your screen. For example, type any gibberish and press enter. Your computer responded with syntax error, which means I don't understand that word in the language I'm using. When you get a syntax error message, simply retype the line correctly. This will eliminate the error. Now type the word new and press enter. New is another reserved word that tells your computer that the next set of instructions it receives from the keyboard will be a new program and that it should forget any previous programs. Typing the word new at the prompt clears the memory. Here's our first program. Type this exactly as it appears. 10 space print space bar shift quotation mark H E L L O shift quotation mark. Then press the enter key. Be sure you use the double quotation mark sign and not the apostrophe. When you enclose words inside of quotation marks, the program will later print out what you have written within the quotation marks exactly as you have written it. If you make a mistake in a line and have already pressed enter, just retype the entire line correctly. This will replace the old line in memory and totally eliminate the error. Now type 20, spacebar, print, spacebar, shift quotation mark, goodbye, shift quotation mark. Then press the enter key. Now type 30, space bar, end, enter. Now type list, enter. There is a new list of what you have just entered. Now type run, enter. 
Your computer followed your instructions and printed exactly what it was told to print. Nothing less, nothing more. Now type list, enter. Let's examine the program. The number 10, number 20, and number 30 are called line numbers. They tell your computer the order in which command should be executed. It is a common programming practice to leave blocks of numbers between line numbers. For example, you could add a line 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. through 19 at any time. Effectively, you have nine more usable lines between each line when you number in multiples of 10. By allowing room for extra commands later, you can save yourself a lot of time with revisions. For example, type the line 15, space, print, space, shift quotation mark, eat, E, A, T, shift quotation mark, enter. Now type list, enter. Notice how the line numbered 15 has been added in the proper order to your list. Now type run, enter. And the program was executed exactly as you modified it without rewriting all the old lines. Incidentally, the word print, as we've used it here, means output to a device. In this case, your monitor screen. It doesn't necessarily mean to print only on your printer. If you make a mistake before you press enter, use the backspace key to erase the line and retype it correctly. If you've already pressed enter and realize it made a mistake, as we did when we typed the word eat, simply retype the line number and the rest of the line correctly. The new correct line will replace the old incorrect line in memory. Now type new, enter. Then 10, spacebar, print, spacebar, 5, shift plus sign, 4, enter. Then type 20, spacebar, end, enter. Then type run, enter. Notice that the program added the 5 and 4 and printed only the total. That's a simple example of an arithmetic function already available in a language program. It might be of interest to you to know that language software has certain functions already programmed and ready for your use. The addition you just did is available in BASIC and BASIC A. Other operations most BASIC language versions offer are subtraction, multiplication, division, and raising to a power. Now let's get rid of that program and do another one. Type new, enter. Then type 10, spacebar, print, spacebar, shift quotation mark, I, spacebar, love, spacebar, shift quotation mark, semicolon, enter. Then type 30, spacebar, go to, spacebar, 10, enter. Then type 20, spacebar, print, spacebar, shift quotation mark, U, shift quotation mark, enter. Now type list, enter. Notice what happened. The list command automatically arranged each line in your program in the proper numerical order. You'll find that a very useful feature as you learn to write longer and longer programs. Now type run, enter. Don't panic. Just type a control scroll lock to stop the program. That go-to command on line 30 caused the loop to be created. Your computer merely did what it was told, went back to line 10 and did it again, and again, and again, until you stopped it. 
Let's take a moment and examine a few of the things we just did. First and foremost, you wrote three small programs and then ran them. Each time you wanted to start a new program, you typed new. That command told your computer to forget forever any previous program in memory and lets you start a complete new one. You then assigned a number to each line. This told your computer in what order you wanted the execution to take place. You also asked your computer to list the program you had just typed in. When it did list, it automatically placed any lines that were typed out of sequence in that you desired, since you gave each line a number. Of course, you asked the computer to run your new program. The last program had what's called a loop in it. When the program came to the line that had a go-to command, it looped back. The loop just kept going round and round until you interrupted the program with the control scroll lock command. When you did the control scroll lock command, your computer told you where it stopped. You used several reserved words when you were programming. Run, list, go to, new, and print. There are many other reserved words that are available to help make programming faster and easier to understand. However, because some words are reserved for certain functions and commands, you must be careful that you don't use them out of context when you are programming. A complete list of the reserved words for a particular language usually comes with a language reference manual when you purchase that language program. Let's try a new program. Clear your screen by typing CLS, enter, and clear the memory for this new program by typing new, then pressing enter. Here's our next program. Type 10 space n space equal sign space value 1 enter. Then type 20 space n space equal sign space n space shift plus sign space one, enter. Next line, type 30, space, print, space, N, enter. Then type 40, space, go to, space, 20, enter. Now list your program. Now run your program. Remember how to stop it? Control scroll lock will do it. In this program, you assigned a variable number to a letter, then told your computer to print the number that represented the letter. You also told it to increase the value of the number by one each time it looped back to line 20. In computer programming, any value, number, or letter on the right of the equal sign gets put into what's on the left of the equal sign. Don't let your previous experience with algebra fool you here. We'll do one more, somewhat more complicated program for now. Follow very carefully and type in each line as we show it. If you make a mistake on a line, Simply retype that line's number and retype the line correctly. Ready? Here it goes. Clear your screen. Type new, enter. Now type 10, space, input, space, shift quotation mark. What is your name? Space, shift, Quotation mark, semicolon, A, shift dollar sign, enter. Check it against ours. Now type 20, space, input, space, shift quotation mark, name an animal, space, shift quotation mark, semicolon, B, shift, dollar sign, enter. Is it exactly like this one?
then type 30 space print space shift quotation mark hello comma space shift quotation mark semicolon a shift dollar sign semicolon shift quotation mark space you look like a space shift quotation mark semicolon b shift dollar sign enter last line type 40 space end enter before you run this program list it type list enter check your list against ours one last time now run it follow the directions you're programmed in and answer the questions as they come up type run enter that's the last program we'll do here it's more complex than the earlier ones but by programming standards it contains a lot of common functions and commands that you will soon discover come easy to you once you become better acquainted with basic programming. That's what computer programming is all about. Step-by-step -step instructions on how to solve a problem in logical sequences written in computer language. Let's take a moment and examine a few of the things we just did. Generally, a program has four parts. Part one, initialization. Part two, the body. Part three, the output and part four, the conclusion. During part one, the initialization, constant and variables are defined and given starting values. Part two, the body, is where the work is done. In this part, the program will ask for data from an input device, such as your keyboard. It will then process that new data with respect to the set of constant and variable values that were programmed in the first step. Then the program will make any decisions that it has been programmed to make. It will then send the results of that computation to an output device, such as your display screen or a printer. This is the third part or output stage of the program. Part four, the conclusion, is just that, the end of the program. And so you see, we're right back to where we started in chapter two. The computer fetches instructions from memory, performs those instructions, adds information if required from input devices, and displays or transmits the results of that process through output devices. We'll do one last exercise. Since that last program was kind of fun, you might want to save it and have your friends run it. You'll create a file on disk so that you won't have to rewrite it when you want to use it again. Find your backup system master. When you do, remove the write protect label that you put on it earlier. Remove the DOS master from drive A and replace it with your unwrite protected backups. Press the special function key labeled F4. When the word save followed by an open quotation mark appears, type a name for your program. Let's call it insult. Then press enter. Your drive should start whirring for a few seconds as the program is written onto your disk. When it stops, type system and press enter. At the DOS prompt, type D-I-R and press enter. When the directory comes up, find your new file labeled insult. Now get back to disk basic by typing basic and pressing enter. When the basic prompt appears, find the F3 key and press it. When the word load followed by an open quotation mark appears, type insult and press enter. Notice that the disk drive ran for a few seconds while your program insult was read from disk into RAM. Now press the F1 key followed by enter. Notice that the program list appears. Since you have saved that program, you should write protect your backup DOS master. 
Go ahead now and remove the disc from the drive. Replace the Right Protect label over the notch and put the disc back into the drive. Now get back to the DOS level by typing System and pressing Enter. You can try to delete or erase that file called Insult by typing either DEL followed by the file name or Erase followed by the file name. Go ahead and try to delete the insult file by typing DEL space insult period BAS and pressing enter. Notice the drive went on for a few seconds while the program looked for the insult file and tried to delete it. However, because you replaced the right protect label, the only thing that happened was the error message telling you that the disk was right protected. Your computer asks you to either abort your command to delete the program, retry, or ignore your command. In this case, just type A and the command will be aborted. You'll be back at the DOS prompt level ready for another command. In this chapter, you have worked with a version of the programming language called BASIC originally developed by a company called Microsoft. You also interacted with the DOS system again. Programming can be extremely complicated, but not necessarily difficult once you learn the language. Essentially, it is very straightforward and logical. If you feel that you'd like to go further with programming, get a hold of any of the currently available programming manuals, a language software program for your computer, and have at it. It can only be learned by doing. But always keep in mind, you don't have to know how to program to get full value from your personal computer. Other people are writing programs every day that will extend the usefulness of your computer for years to come. You now have learned all you need for years of very rewarding and interesting interaction with your personal computer.